Welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements in my practice rather than toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, if you want to get off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program or help a loved one or friend or family member get off their medication and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 866-735-2470 is our number. 866-735-2470. If you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to the conversation, 866-735-2470 is our number today on the Bright Side, every day on the Bright Side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, head over to my website, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, also brightsideben.com. You can order products right off the website. You can check out our blog as well. We also have video posts up at criticalhealthnews.com. Just did one on diabetes. I have one coming up on acne. There's probably about seven. Well, there's a whole bunch of them up there at criticalhealthnews.com. You can also purchase Truth Treatment products if you so desire off my website, truthtreatments.com. Make sure you take a look at our Retinol 5% Gel. No preservative, no fragrance, no filler, no wax, no water, no nothing that your skin doesn't use or doesn't need. All our products, all my Truth Treatment products are formulated that way with high concentrations of nutrients and none of the bad stuff. Nothing that you're, you know, shouldn't have to pay for something that your skin is not using or needing. If you buy a typical skincare product, you're paying for 90 to 95% filler and wax and water and stuff that you don't need. Why should you have to pay for water? Why should you have to pay for silicone? Why should you have to pay for wax? Why should you have to pay for a preservative and emulsifying agent? It just doesn't make sense, folks. Check out our products at truthtreatments.com, including our retinol 5% gel, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so talking about veggies and the ketogenic diet and weight loss. A few more things I want to say about veggies, and then we'll get into some practical aspects, some more practical. It's all practical, but some specific practical aspects of how to employ the ketogenic diet, which you want to kind of start in slowly with, and which you also don't necessarily need to go full-blown ketogenic. You know, the ketogenic diet can be employed in different degrees. If you're using using the ketogenic diet for seizure disorders, you probably want to go 90% fat. That's what's recommended by medical folks. If you're just trying to lose weight, you may want to go 60 to 65% fats. In any case, it's a low-carb, high-fat, moderate protein diet to different degrees. We'll continue talking about that after I finish up a few more things about vegetables, which I find incredibly fascinating. Hopefully you do too. Last time we spoke, we talked about the electrical nature of veggies. In addition to the fact that there's these nutri- a whole class of nutrients, thousands, 25,000 or so of uh, nutrients that are called phytonutrients or plant nutrients that are not found anywhere else. They're just found in veggies, carotenes and flavonoids and lignins and saponins. We know them by names like beta carotene or lutein or zeoxanthine or quercetin. You hear these uh, periodically. You he- you'll hear about these in the world of nutrition. They're only found in plants. They're tremendously valuable. And they're one of the main reasons why you want to make sure that most of your most of your caloric intake, or at least most of the foods that you eat, are coming from vegetables. Vegetables, vegetables, vegetables. Yesterday we talked about how vegetables have this miraculous, magical way of electrifying minerals, of, of binding them up, of tying them up with proteins and making dead minerals or inorganic minerals into usable organic minerals. This is the greatest gift, in my opinion, the greatest gift that veggies give to the human beings and the animals that eat them. 
They can turn silt and rock and inorganic minerals into living substances, and nothing else is capable of this. With all our amazing scientific know-how and the biggest factories and the most sophisticated scientific techniques and, and intricate technologies, we can't even begin to approach the miraculous chemical processes that occur in the tiniest little spaces of the tiniest little bean sprout or the tiniest little beet top or celery leaf. This is truly a miracle of the highest degree. Vegetation eats rock. Vegetation then transforms that rock into nutritional minerals. It electrically vivifies the minerals so that the animals can eat them and then leverage the power of the minerals to sustain their livingness. You can't eat rocks, but you can eat those minerals or eat those rocks once they've been transformed into living minerals. The plant turns inorganic minerals into organic minerals and just as spectacularly, by the way, via the bacteria, that are associated with those plants, that live in the roots of those plants, plants and the bacteria that are linked to them can turn nitrogen gas, inert nitrogen gas, which makes up 80% of our environment and is completely useless to the animals that live on the planet, including us, these nitrogen fixing bacteria that are associated with the plants can turn this inert nitrogen gas into protein into usable nitrogen. That's what protein really is. It's usable nitrogen. And this all occurs via the miracle of these plants and the nitrogen fixing bacteria that live on the plants. Plants also transform the sun into matter. Another miracle. Plants can turn the sun into sugar. It's staggering. This is mind boggling. How does the sun get turned into sugar via the action of a plant? Nobody knows. That's called photosynthesis and it is another miracle performed by plants. Even the vitamins themselves miraculous elements and nobody understands really what the heck's going on, how to make vitamins. We can make some of them, but it takes humongous factories to do them, but not all of them. We can make a few, but plants can do it. Plants can make vitamins. Plants can make sugars. Plants can make fats. Plants can make the protein. Plants can turn inorganic minerals into organic minerals. All of this occurs at a, with a, a sophistication that to a biochemist is just, just mind-blowing should be mind-blowing to all of us and this is in the humblest little vegetable and nothing we can do in a laboratory it doesn't matter we don't need to do in a laboratory it's all set up for us all a gift of the divine force set up for us through the vegetating plant i.e. the vegetable which can be basically thought of as a intermediary between the earth between the planet and the animal between death and life between inertia and animation all nutrient material is formed in the vegetable world. The animal world makes nothing. The animal world just uses the vegetable world and then returns it back to the vegetable world for inner, uh, so it could be recycled. The animal kingdom, us, animals, just uses stuff and recycles it back to the earth where the vegetation can pick it up again. So in a way, we're all vegetarians. Even carnivores and omnivores are ultimately only leveraging the power of vegetables. This is the logic of veganism. Why go to the intermediate when you can go to the source? Why derive nutrition from meat, which is in itself getting the nutritional value from vegetation? Well, there's an answer to that, which we're going to be talking about it. Animals have a way of concentrating the nutritional value of the vegetable in their flesh. So vegans will tell you and vegetarians will tell you why, why mess around with the, with the meat? You can just go right to the vegetable. Vegetables, vegans and vegetarians will say, oh, vegetables have everything. They have protein. Well, what they're missing is animals densify those nutrients. Meat and dairy and other animal products are more nutritionally dense because the job of the animal is to compress all that power that's in the, veg is in the vegetable, uh, that's in the vegetable kingdom. You don't need to eat anywhere near as much meat to get the same nutritional value as you do from vegetables. This is the reason why animal products are so valuable. Despite what you hear from vegans and vegetarians, animal products are tremendously valuable. And it's unfortunate to, to avoid that value, in my humble opinion. But there's a dark side, too. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today.
Okay, we are back on the bright side. Got lines open for you at 866-735-2470. We want to help you change your life today. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drug, if you're stuck on a prescription drug like a beta blocker or a calcium channel blocker or any prescription drug and the doctor said you're going to be on it the rest of your life, please understand there's no need for anybody to be on a prescription drug for the rest of their life. Yes, you need a prescription drug once in a while. You need to be stabilized, perhaps. Pain pills are important. Antibiotics can be important as well. Perhaps there's a need at times for chemotherapy, although nowhere near as much as it's used. But nobody should ever have to be stuck on a prescription drug. If you are on one, please understand. Please understand. If you are taking a prescription drug, you are not helping yourself. You're making matters worse, and you're accelerating your demise. Even if your your, your cholesterol scores are lower, even if your diagnostics are better, it doesn't matter. That's statistics. That's not health. Health is not statistics. And there is no way anybody can defend the use of a prescription drug for the long term aside from diagnostics. If you're stuck on one, please let us help you. We can wean you off your prescription drugs, tell you how to wean your off your, tell you how to wean yourself off your prescription drugs using good nutrition, using a good nutritional supplement program as well. 866-735-2470 is our number, 866-735-2470. If you have questions about skin health issues, ingredients, formulations, or if you just have a success story, or if you want to contribute to the conversation, we have lines open for you, 866-735-2470. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products you hear advertised on the program, or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, you can head over to my website, brightsideben.com criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com or you can call the phone team directly at 866-735-2470 866-735-2470 if you want to start yourself a little business helping spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program if you've experienced the successes if you're one of the success stories that I hear about all the time and you want to contribute now, you want to pay it forward, and you want to generate an income as well, call 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can become a distributor, even if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price. 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben phone team. Okay, so in a way, we're all vegetarians. If we're eating meat, we're still accessing the power of ve the vegetable, concentrated as it may be. This is what makes meat and dairy and other animal products so darn valuable and why it's so unfortunate to avoid them. Now, if you have philosophical reasons why you don't want to eat meat, I can't argue with that. I'm not a big believer in killing things to eat them. That doesn't turn me on to do it. But we live, as this is the way the world is structured. It's called the food chain. And that's, I didn't make it up. It's just there. Little things eat bigger things, and, and uh, bi uh, the bigger things get eaten by still bigger things. That's just how it works. And that's called the food chain. And when it comes to meat and dairy and eggs and animal products, you don't need to eat anywhere near as much of them to get the same nutritional value that you would from vegetables. Save the phytonutrients, except for the phytonutrients, which you have to pretty much eat veggies to get. The phytonutrients are dense in vegetables, but with the exception of the phytonutrients, you're going to get more of everything when you eat meat because animals densify the, the vegetation. That's their job. Animals are in constant movement, constant activity, and this makes their nutrients readily available. This makes meat a, a source of readily available nutrition. Much of the nutritional value of plants is locked up. It's tied up. It's difficult to get to. It has to be released by processing, by cooking, by grinding, by heat, by uh, enzymes, various different, there's various different ways to do it, fermentation. Uh, living forces such as bacteria have a way of, uh, of loosening up those nutrients. Even if you're not going ketogenic, veggies should play a key role in all healthy diets. I'm not saying that vegetables are not important. They're tremendously important. They're filling. They're medicinal. There's, they're nature's way of turning rocks into nutrition. They can turn inert soil substances and make them usable minerals. This was one of Dr. Wallach's brilliant insights. This is what plant-derived minerals are all about. This is what drives longevity. This is what drives the longevity business. This is what makes the Beyond Tangy Tangerine so powerful. But as important as they are, in my opinion, and it's true, we should be eating more veggie, more from the veggie food groups, uh, food groups than than any other. 
but this does not diminish the value of animal foods. True, meat and dairy have their problems. To a lesser extent, eggs have problems, seafood have problems, mostly because of how we raise them and how we feed them. Uh, antibiotics and hormones and you know how we take care of our animals there's big problems associated with meat and, and animal products however when it comes to electrical energy and nutrient density i.e. nutrient value per unit of food eating uh, per unit of food that we eat and the electrical energy vegetables are not even remotely close to the pure raw nutritional power, not raw, but pure nutritional power found in animal foods. Sorry vegetarians, as much as I love my broccoli and Brussels sprouts and as important as those phytonutrients are, when it comes to nutritional bang for your food buck, veggies can't even touch an egg. A stalk of broccoli can't even begin to come close to the power of an egg or a glass of raw milk or a piece of liver. Interestingly, by the way, the most uh, most uh, powerful, nutritionally dense, non-animal food when it comes to nutrient density are going to be fungus and mushrooms, which are technically a cross between an animal and a vegetable. So fungus is, have a certain quality that animal food, uh, certain animal f uh, food or animal nutrient quality that, that meat may have. That's why you can get portobello, vegetarian sometimes will eat portobello mushroom steaks. It almost looks like a steak. It has a beefy quality to it. There's certain nutrients like vitamin D, for example, that are typically animal nutrients that are found in fungus and mushrooms. So if you are a vegetarian, you want to be able to leverage the power of the mushroom. Mushrooms do have some pretty important nutritional, especially for vegetarians, some pretty important nutritional benefits. But when it comes to animal foods, when it comes to understanding the power of eggs and flesh and dairy, we got to go back to our electrical model of food. In terms of the stuff of life, as we move up the food chain, energy becomes more and more concentrated, more, more electrically, electrically dense. Yesterday we talked about the, the mineral kingdom. This is the most fundamental kingdom on planet Earth, what we call rocks. Now the electrical nature of minerals is pretty obvious. Some rocks will spontaneously emit electrical energy. We call that radiation, radioactivity. That's what magnetism is all about. So certainly there is an electrical energy associated with rocks. Rocks are capable of generating an electrical charge when they're pressurized, when, they're, when, they're, uh, uh, when, they're, uh, when pressure is applied to them. That's called piezo electricity, which means pressure electricity. There's other rocks that will emit light. Phosphorus, for example, is a light emitting rock. Some rocks like granite and crystal uh, and uh, uh, quartz will have a crystalline nature, crystalline structure, which allows them to store energy and release energy just like a battery. Still, the electrical nature of rocks is such that the energy is not concentrated enough that they have much nutritional value for animals. You can't eat rocks and get any nutrition, even though rocks, technically speaking, have the minerals we need. Thus the importance of the plants. Thus the importance of the fungus, by the way, and lichen. Fungus and lichen can also get nourishment from rocks. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got to take a break. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. All right, we are back on the bright side. Got lines open for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. 844-236-6010 is our number. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or the longevity business or longevity ingredients or skin health ingredients or formulations or if you have a success story you'd like to share or if you just want to contribute to our conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number. Hang tight if you're on hold. We'll get to you in just a moment. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, head over to criticalhealthnews.com. That's my blog that I do with George Nori. I also have uh, uh, video posts up there, quite a few video posts, interviews and such at criticalhealthnews.com. Thank you to John T. Collier for setting that one up. Also, you can check out my blog at pharmacistspend.com. Thank you to Robert Lundgren for setting that one up. And then benfuchsarchives.com, which is a really cool website that uh, my friend Peter in the UK set up for me. Thank you so much, Peter, for doing that. And of course, you can also go to brightsideben.com. If you want to purchase any longevity products or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, 
866-735-2470 is the number for the phone team if you want to talk to somebody directly. 866-735-2470. And if you want to purchase any of our skin health products, go to truthtreatments.com. I also want to encourage you to check out my Facebook page, The Truth With Ben. So many of you are, are uh, friending me or trying to friend me at my personal Facebook page, but that's that's pretty much filled up. And uh, I know I've got a backlog of a couple hundred folks who want to who want to friend me there, but I encourage you to go over to to the Truth with Ben. That's my business page, and I blog on truth sub, on skin health subjects on that Facebook page, the Truth with Ben. Okay, so uh, let's see here. I've got some lines open for you. I just want to say a couple more things about vegetation, which is pretty incredible. The humble little vegetable. Not to say that animal foods are not important. They are tremendously valuable. That's because of how, uh, how energy is concentrated as we move up the kingdom chain. I don't want to say the food chain, but the kingdom chain. Rocks emit energy. Rocks, rocks are highly energetic or relatively highly energetic. That's what radioactivity is about. But vegetables are even more energetic. They concentrate the rocks. They, in essence, eat the rocks. And this is why vegetable, vegetables will rot eventually. Remember, we always say in the world of nutrition, when a food or a nutritional element rots or when it decays, that's a measurement of its nutritional value. The more it rots, the more it decays. The faster it rots, the faster it decays, the more energy it has. Rocks don't rot. But as you move up the chain, vegetables begin to break down over time because vegetables are higher energy than rocks. That's how you could tell a vegetable has higher energy than rocks because it will rot over the course of time. It will start to break down over the course of time. But then you go up one step, <coughs> excuse me, you go up one more step to the animal kingdom. The animal kingdom even densifies the nutrients even more. Animals are the next step in the food chain up from vegetables, and they really densify the, the nutrients. And this is why they're so valuable. This is why they're so nourishing. This is why they're so satisfying, and this is why they rot so quickly. The world of nutrition, the higher the electrical energy of a nutrient or food, the higher the vibration, the more valuable it is. And the more fragile it is, and this is why animal foods are so much more expensive than plant foods. They're fragile. They don't lend themselves to commodification. They're not commodities. They're not as easily they're not as easily made into commodities. Yes, they're commodities, but not as easily made into commodities as grains and vegetables, which are more stable. Now, vegetables are fragile as well, but they're nowhere near as delicate and as perishable as animal products. So as we go up the food chain, rocks turn into vegetables, which then turn into animal foods, and we get more we get higher and denser electrical energy and higher vibration. Animal products, theoretically anyway, are the most nutritionally valuable of all foods. I say theoretically because we've contaminated our uh, the way we process our animal foods so significantly that we lose value. They lose value, unfortunately. But theoretically, the most nutritionally valuable of all foods are your animal foods. And vegetarians are going to be missing out on a lot of nutritional value by avoiding them. If you're philosophically a vegetarian, well, I can't argue with that. But as far as health goes and as far as food benefit goes, don't let any vegetarian tell you that animal foods are not healthy. They are very, very healthy. Not to diminish the power of veggies, which in my opinion should make up most of what we, should, of what we eat, but... It's tragic to th not eat the egg or dairy or, or even meats and seafood, certainly. As toxic as we made our oceans, by the way. All right. I want to say tomorrow I'll say a couple things about how to really leverage the power of your vegetables, especially if you're going ketogenic. And then we will continue talking uh, about the ketogenic diet. We'll finish up talking about the ketogenic diet, get some practical aspects of it. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Andre in California, what's going on? Welcome. Hey, good morning, Ben. How are you? Good morning, my friend. What's going on today? Uh, I talked to you about a month ago about my thyroid problem and Graves' disease on my eyes. And uh, now my eye doctor wants me to do an MRI to figure out what's going on behind the eyeball. Okay. Well, now, pushing. So what are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, MRI is not 
Uh, MRIs are amazing, first of all. The science behind the MRI involves basically nuclear physics, quantum okay. physics. It's just mind-blowing. I, I really don't even understand how it works, the MRI, but basically it works with the nucleus of water atoms and hydrogen atoms and water, and it's just an amazing device. But it's not very – you don't really have to worry about an MRI. There's no, there's no toxicity or side effects or, or danger associated with MRIs. But I'm more concerned about okay. your Graves' disease. Did we talk about food with your Graves? Uh, yeah, we talked a little bit about food, and you try. You told me that you try to avoid fruit, but sugar. Sugar. I don't eat, much, I don't eat sugar. I just eat like maybe about five servings of fruit a day. Is that too much? Wait, 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 wait! Just five servings of fruit a day? That's a tremendous yeah. amount of fruit. Are you serious? Did you say fruit or food? Fruit. That's a lot of fruit, my friend. What are you eating? Oh. What kind of fruit? A uh, couple of tangerine in the morning, some pineapples, uh, grapes, blood today. Dude, apples. you are pounding the fruit, my friend. You are pounding the fruit. I would back down significantly on that. Why not switch over to veggies? I, you probably I like the sweet. veggies too. Switch over to like, veggies. Have one piece of fruit. Switch over to veggies. How about the B vitamins? Are you using lots of B vitamins? Uh, B vitamins. Um, I do a multivitamin, but I want to get the the. No, the, you know, Andre. The you know, here's the thing, Andre. I'm not going to beat you up on this because, you know, we all get to live our lives. But you're interacting with the medical model unnecessarily. You could take care of this yourself. First of all, and I'm not only speaking to you. I'm speaking to other folks who have Graves' disease. The first and most important thing to recognize about Graves' disease is, is that it is an autoimmune disease. You've heard that term, I'm sure, right? Autoimmune disease? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, they, told you it was an auto, they told you you have an autoimmune disease. Here's the thing about autoimmune diseases like Graves. You're more susceptible to other autoimmune diseases. The way an autoimmune disease works is, for some reason, the body looks at your thyroid, in your case, as being the enemy. And this usually has to do with the foods you're eating. Not necessarily the sugar, which is, which is really hyping up the thyroid and really messing up your metabolism, but really, more importantly, some food that you don't agree with. In other words, a food intolerance or a food allergy. Autoimmune disease are linked to something called leaky gut syndrome. And leaky gut syndrome is when food particles get into the blood. You know, the digestive process is so amazing. If we were to take a hamburger, or you were to take your tangerine, for example, Andre, and you were to inject that tangerine into your blood, peel it, of course, and, and just inject the pulp right into your blood, it would kill you. But somehow, through the digestive process, when we eat foods, the foods are made safe so they can get into the blood. However, if our digestive process isn't working completely, if we're not digesting our food completely, then food particles can leak into the blood undigested. And this is where autoimmunity comes in. Hang on, Andre. We've got to take a break. We'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. I'm Farmers. It's Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Andre in California about Graves' disease and MRIs, I guess. I, I hope I'm not giving you too much information here, Andre, but a lot of people are dealing with Graves' disease. It's a big problem. It's a, a thyroid disease in general is a big issue. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly hypo, but hyperthyroidism, it's got to be miserable. I, I can only imagine uh, Graves' disease is when your thyroid goes crazy and your blood pressure goes up and you sweat and you got oily skin and you're all jittery and insomnia and anxiety. Does it sound right, Andre? Am I describing that correctly? Yeah, but I don't get too much of those symptoms. Uh, my main symptoms is uh, I see double. <laughs> Oh, you see double. Okay. All right. That can happen. Yeah. yeah. Eye problems definitely can happen. Sometimes people's eyes will bulge. Do you have the bulging thing with the eyes? Uh, do your eyes uh, go? Not too much bulging, but uh, my, it seems like my eyes is going in more and thinner, like inside, you know, towards my nose. I see. Okay. So, well, yeah, all that, all that is associated with Graves, which is an autoimmune disease. And I was, before we went to break, I was telling you about the digestive system. If you were to take a hamburger yeah. and grind it up and mush it up and put it in an IV and inject it into your blood, it would kill you. But somehow we can eat that hamburger, and it does go into our blood, ultimately, and we're fine. Why is that? Well, the digestive process breaks up the food into tiny little particles, super tiny little particles, and then those tiny little particles get into the
into the blood and we're fine. However, okay. if the digestive system is not working correctly and the food is not getting crushed up into the little particles and bigger particles are leaking into the blood, that's where we run into problems. This activates an immune response in the blood at first. Ultimately, as those particles deposit in various parts of the body, it will activate an immune response against the organs and uh, various systems of the body. You can have auto, and by the way, I did a video on autoimmune diseases up at criticalhealthnews.com if anybody's interested in checking that out. Uh, so in your case, the particles are landing in your thyroid and now your body's attacking the thyroid because it looks different. It looks like the enemy, if you will. So you got to focus on foods. That means uh, all the things we talk about, the elimination diet, I'd be fasting if I could. The five fruits a day definitely is not a good idea. Uh, make okay. sure you're using digestive enzymes with all your meals and the good bacteria as well, the probiotics. Uh, if you want to if you want to reduce your symptoms immediately, Andre, fast for a yep. day or two. Do a Swero V cleanse and just fast for one or two days, and you'll notice a dramatic de a dramatic decrease in your in your symptomology, whatever it is, if it's your eyes or wh wherever your symptoms are. As far as the MRI yeah. goes, I wouldn't worry about that too much. That's the least of your problems at this point. Okay, and when you fast, Ben, do you you just drink water, or can you drink juice? Or uh, no, I would juice is a big problem. Veggie juice, not fruit juice. Veggie juice you could do. Fruit juice could be a problem because the sugar yeah. is readily accessible and it can throw off your, your uh, insulin chemistry and uh, it could throw off a lot of things. So you want to stay away from sugars, but vegetable juice yeah. can be helpful. Lemon, like a squeeze a lemon in some water maybe and just do a little lemon juice or do a Swero V uh, cleanse where you, I don't know if you're doing the Longevity products, Andre, but we have a product called yeah, Swero V. Yeah. Check yeah. out the Swero V, S U E R O V I E, and you can do a Swero V fast where you do half a bottle every hour. I'm sorry if I gave you too much information. I, I didn't mean to, but there's a lot of folks who have thyroid problems, and we're helping everybody out here today. Is that okay, Andre? Well, I appreciate and that. Yeah, God bless yeah, you. Yeah, we really appreciate all the information. Thank you so okay, much. Okay, buddy. Take care, man. Have a, have a beautiful day. All right, let's go to Michigan and welcome Beth to the bright side. Good morning, Beth. Good morning. Hey. I have a friend who is uh, diabetic. And interestingly, it seems to kind of run in the family. He had a brother with it and a sister that developed it at a very young age, and the brother did too. Now, he's older and has developed it, and I'm wondering what I can do to help So him. easy, Beth. This is, this is the most tragic of all our health conditions. You know, they, if you look at the statistics, mortality statistics in the United States, you'll find that diabetes is the third leading cause of death. But when you factor in uh, that diabetes is associated with cardiovascular disease, which is the first leading cause of death, and diabetes is associated with cancer, which is the second leading cause of death, diabetes, with all of these, when you, when you add all these factors in, diabetes is the number one cause of death in this country and probably around the world and a source of untold amount of misery and here's where it becomes so tragic it's unnecessary it's for the most part an eating disease it's how we eat so it, all you got to do is control how you eat. Now, of course, that's easier said than done because as uh, we talked about last week at length, we get addicted to food, we get conditioned to food, we're hypnotized to eat, we eat for emotional reasons. We're the only animals that eat because we're depressed. Lions don't get depressed. Lions don't eat because they're depressed. Animals in the wild don't eat when they're bummed out. We do, uh, the, uh, with the exception, by the way, of domesticated animals, which will get, uh, that do get diabetes. But wild animals don't eat emotionally. We do. Domestic Domesticate, part of the domestication process, and it could be argued that we are intentionally domesticated through fluoride and through sugar and through processed food. And why that is, well, I'll leave that up to you listeners to decide why we're intentionally domesticated, but you can pretty much guess. The fact of the matter is, is we eat for reasons that are not associated to health, not associated to what we need. We eat not just because we're hungry, not just because we need to be nourished. This is what diabetes is. Diabetes is our punishment for eating incorrectly. And I, I, don't, I know that might be politically incorrect. I'm sorry to say. But that's just the health facts. That's just the scientific facts. Diabetes is the price we pay for eating incorrectly. But you, the good news is, is we can turn it around instantly. 
by simply changing how we eat and then throwing in some nutritional supplements that help us process sugar. So number one, you got to stop eating so many, not you, but your friend or whoever's dealing with this issue has to stop eating so many calories, especially calories that come from refined flour and sugar. And that includes fruits, unfortunately, today, although small amounts of fruits are not necessarily a problem, but big melons and, you know, eating honeydew and five times, eating fruit five times a day, et cetera, that could be a problem. So restricting your intake of processed foods, processed sugars, processed carbs, starchy veggies, sweet, uh, sweet fruits, etc. Step number one. Step number two, making sure you use nutrients that help you process sugar, and there's a slew of them. Chromium and vanadium, superstars for processing sugar. Niacin, vitamin B3, superstar for helping the body process sugar. Vitamin B1, uh, thiamine, superstar for helping the body process sugar. Sulfur is important. Sulfur is an element in the molecule insulin. Uh, 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 selenium is also important. The amino acid taurine is important. The amino acid arginine is important. Omega-3 fatty acids are important. More fiber, important. More water, especially after meals. If you fall off the wagon, drink a bunch of water. If you go to a party and you eat a, you know, a bunch of sweets or, or, or insulin spiking foods, drink a bunch of water. Now, also, it's important to recognize that blood sugar will spike when our cortisol goes up and we're under stress. So making sure this is how stress makes you fat. You may have heard some, it hasn't been out and it hasn't been advertised as much lately, but they used to be commercials running for how stress makes you fat. Have you heard about, you know, anti-cortisol kinds of supplements? You remember that a couple of years ago, they were yeah. talking about that. That's, this is why when we're under stress, our liver will release sugar and our blood sugar will go up. So relaxing the body is also important. Uh, last, but most certainly not least, probiotics and good bacteria. This is uh, this is new news. This is recent news, at least for the la within the last year or so. Uh, my, the microbiome, that is bacteria that live in the gut, have a major role to play in sugar metabolism and in energy processing. So making sure your gut, uh, you're taking care of gut health, that intestinal health, using probiotics, the biolumin nightly essence, as well as uh, fermented foods, uh, and then also keeping the, the environment uh, hospitable for good bacteria with fiber and vegetables, veggie juices. Beth, this is so tragic, it's heartbreaking because not only is it a leading cause of death, but it's a leading cause of blindness, it's a leading cause of amputation, it's just a leading cause of misery. And if you go to a doctor, you're gonna end up with a toxic drug, an awful drug, and, and that's not gonna make, uh, that's not gonna increase your longevity one whit, even though it may lower your blood sugar artificially. So please, Beth, I would encourage you to, to start using some, of, or have your friend start using some of these nutrients and take advantage of these nutritional strategies that we talk about all the time. Last but not least, go ketogenic. Use the ketogenic diet. Have your friend listen to our archives for the last couple of days when we're talking about the ketogenic diet. Okay, I know I gave you a bunch of information, but you can listen to it on the archives at Ben Fuchs Archives or BrightsideBen.com. Okay? Thank you so much. Th thank you. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. All right, David in Texas, you get the last word. What's up, my friend? Hey, good morning, Ben. This is uh, Dave in Austin, Texas. Um, hey, Dave. Couple things. I'll, I'll, try, I'll try to make it really quick. Yes. Um, you had a caller just a few minutes ago referring to his Graves' disease. Yes. Um, you got me through my Graves' disease uh, when the doctors wanted to remove my thyroid. I had it really bad. I had eyes, and I was actually growing boobs. Man, it was terrible. Isn't that and awful? It, it was horrendous. So, how'd you do it? I got about I got about twenty seconds. Give us a couple of quick tips, and then I'm gonna have to let you go because we only got okay, twenty so seconds. Get that gut in shape with the ultimate enzymes, man. Get lots of oxygen, deep breathe, and get nutrients, man. Nutrient, nu get some nutrition, you know, through the BTT, veggie juice, whatever it takes, and reduce that stress, man. Thank you. And thank I you. I get you to talk about Ezekiel bread, man. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and talk about that tomorrow. Scott, David, I got to go. Thank you so much, man. Have a beautiful day. That's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a beautiful, spectacular, awesome day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.